The Wire follows the drug trade of Baltimore, Maryland by observing both the drug dealers and kingpins and the cops who are out to stop them. The Wire is stacked with a vast amount of characters on both sides of the law, many of which are three-dimensional, fully realised and fleshed out. As such, numerous characters have found themselves to have become fan favourites of the show, such as Bunny Colvin, Lester, Bodie, Bubbles, Bonk and of course, Omar. One such celebrated character is Slim Charles, a character who embodies the streets to such an extent that we don't even know his full real name and only know him by his hood name. Slim is a relatively minor character in the grand scheme of things in The Wire but he has been established as one of the most memorable. Now I know this video is supposed to be answering a question but if you'll allow me, before we get there I wanted to talk a little about Slim. Maybe this should be in a separate video and I might do a full analysis on Slim in the future so subscribe to the channel to keep up to date. But Slim Charles is one of my favourite characters in the show. Even putting his personality to a side for a moment, I really like his deep gravelly voice, his laugh, I like the way he always seems to be lumbering around and walks like he's in a constant state of walking up a hill. The Wire is great at giving characters individualistic traits to make them stand out and Slim is a great example of that. He first appears in season 3 as one of the chief enforcers of the Barksdale crew, working under Stringer Bell and later Avon Barksdale when the latter is released from prison. It's not quite clear what Slim was doing in season 1 or 2 but a line of dialogue from Avon tells us that he was hired suggesting he hasn't come up the ranks in the Barksdale crew and was instead imported. Perhaps he belonged to another crew which dissolved, maybe he was recently released from prison himself and was an independent. Either way, The Wire lets us know that Slim is a man with a big rep and he's highly respected by pretty much everyone he deals with. And it's no wonder. Slim is level-headed, he is not politically ambitious, he has a code and lives by it, he stays in his lane and because he seems so content with where he is, he can be trusted by the higher-ups without them having to look over their shoulder. Slim's equivalent in the legitimate world is probably Jay Landman. Both men are in that classic middle management position, both attempting to keep the bosses happy and simultaneously the troopers on the ground floor content and in shape. Slim will cover for you and stick his neck out when he thinks he's made a mistake, like how he owns up to shooting too early when he and Kati are tasked with killing some of Marlowe's men and fruit escapes. Even though it was actually Kati who couldn't bring himself to pull the trigger, Charles thinks he is to blame and opens up to it in front of Avon. He'll do that, but like Landsman, knows when to talk and when not to, and you won't see him interfering in business that doesn't concern him and which could land him in trouble, like how he silently watches Lil Kev being dumped into a truck on his way to a vacant. With The Wire, even though numerous characters commit heinous atrocities, the ones that seem to stick with us seem to be the ones who have some kind of ethical principle and as such, Slim comes out looking tall like when he scolds the two goofs for nearly killing a bona fide coloured lady on a Sunday morning. He even gets the respect of the likes of Marlo and Omar, Omar saying, Slim, you're gonna make me hurt you, when he is contemplating shooting him, suggests not only is he well aware of who Slim is, but he has respect for him, and in the same scene, Slim does not beg for his life, instead carrying himself with dignity a true tower of integrity in a world of moral midgets, especially given how inept some of the younger members of the Barksdale organisation were. After the Barksdale crew collapses, we see that Slim moves over to Eastside and becomes Proposition Joe's right-hand man. Again, the fact that he isn't left out to rot like Bodie or even killed after the Barksdale-Stanfield war shows how much he is valued in the street being scooped up by the likes of Joe in a top tier position. Slim knows his position and doesn't stray outside of the boundaries. For example, he had the drop on Marlowe in season 3 and could have killed him, but he didn't as the order never came through. Throughout the show, his advice and thoughts often prove to be grounded in common sense, like how he warns Joe about Marlowe getting too close to the connect, recognising that killing Senator Clay Davis is a bad idea 
and him saying he's not cut out for a CEO role when Marlowe offers him a good position. A wise call given the unpredictability and danger of Marlowe. He declines in a respectful manner in order not to hurt Marlowe's ego and he recognises his own limitations. Some people are better at being number two, as an infamous Al Pacino impressionist once said. Slim has a great understanding of the game. It was intrinsic to him, and given by the end of the season, those who have followed his street code, like Omar, Bodie and Joe, were out for the count, Slim is a dying breed. He is the pawn that crossed the board and became a queen, starting off as a Barksdale goon with a deep voice, and ending the series as a co-chairman of the co-op, with a direct line to the Greeks. And then there's Cheese. Cheese and Slim are both lieutenants of Proposition Joe, but the similarities end there. Cheese is incompetent, rash, immature, and there's very little reason to assume he would make it as far as he did if it wasn't for the fact that Joe is his uncle. Cheese is universally hated by the Wire fans, but I have to say I loved him. Not as a person, but as a character. He had some great moments, like when he nearly starts crying when he is interrogated because of his dead dog. He has some really funny lines and it was amusing to see him do things like, say, storming off after the co-op meeting, upturning his chair like his mum just told him to finish his greens before he gets more cheese. The guy acts like a petulant teenager and he's hilarious for it. But then of course, this burdensome individual had to go and betray his uncle, working directly with Marlowe who has Joe taken out. Cheese betraying Prop Joe and all the nuance that was shown in the build-up is something I've discussed in a separate video called Why Did Cheese Betray Proposition Joe? Today, I wanted to look at Charles killing Cheese. Of course, as we know, after Joe's death, Cheese aligns himself with Marlowe and becomes one of the higher ups in his organisation and when Marlowe is arrested and sells the connect, the members of the co-op pitch in to buy it from him. In a street conference, Slim says that the co-op is short of 900 to buy the connect, and Cheese nonchalantly says he can put that up, to the surprise of the rest of the gangsters. When Fat Face Rick questions where Cheese could get that kind of money, and that things were better under Joe than when Cheese sided with Marlowe, Cheese launches into a monologue about how the old days are the old days. But before he can finish his Oscar acceptance speech, Slim Charles removes him from the chat by putting a bullet in his head. This is probably the closest The Wire gets to having a feel-good moment, a scene that provides a release of cathartic energy by taking out one of the most hated characters at the hands of one of the most respected. On a personal note, I didn't actually get the full beans of this scene because it was spoiled for me before I got there, but hey-ho. And why did Slim Charles kill Cheese? Well, as he says, that was for Joe. It again highlights Slim's integrity and street credit that he would risk being a sentimental motherfucker and losing the co-op money to avenge his boss long after he's already been killed. It highlights his loyalty to Joe, shows how close he was to him and how much he and the rest of the co-op, seeing as though no one had a problem with Cheese's death, respected Joe, and he valued Joe's memory over getting past the last hurdle with getting the 900 for Marlowe. But there's potentially a lot more to Slim's execution decision than meets the eye. It comes off as a sentimental, impulsive action, but it may be that it was actually quite calculated for a few reasons. Firstly, it wasn't simply a case of a pent-up sense of righteous fury and barely concealed burning desire for revenge, but killing Cheese is quite simply a sensible decision given he brings nothing to the table aside from the cash, which can be gotten elsewhere. Cheese has a lack of loyalty. In fact, he's actively bragging about it to the co-op. He's dangerous. A person like him creates instability. He has proven he's rash, untrustworthy, treacherous, and has ambition. That kind of behaviour cannot be tolerated. And by putting a gun at the face of a leading member of the co-op, you've shown yourself to be a threat. The co-op has just had enough of characters like Marlowe, people who won't play by the civilised rules that have been already established, and Slim knows how to read the room. He's chosen to pop Cheese at a time and place where not only will there be no repercussions, don't forget Cheese's bodyguard was standing there as well, but he's got the co-op being in praise of the decision. The Cheese stands alone. It's also Slim establishing dominance. Let's not forget, the show's final montage shows he and Rick with the Greeks, 
and after Joe's death and Marlo bowing out, Slim is all of a sudden a lot more powerful, and someone whipping out guns and making threats undermines his authority as much as anyone else's, so he puts Cheese in his rightful place, in a puddle of his own blood. You know, there's also another element to this. One of the first impressions you get from this storyline is that Slim already knew, as did most of the guys, that Cheese betrayed Joe. I mean, a scene between Joe and Slim outside the funeral shop already shows they suspected Cheese, and Slim killing Cheese was him getting revenge for Joe. But the thing is, we never actually receive confirmation that Slim knew Cheese betrayed Joe. Joe knew in his final moments, but for Slim Charles, it was never more than a heavy suspicion. It could possibly be that it never entered anyone's head that Cheese actually sold out Prop Joe. Rather, everyone thought Marlowe's goons got to him, and Cheese utilised the situation by aligning himself with Marlowe. Now hear me out, it might be that Slim didn't even know, but suspected, much like how Fat Face Rick didn't know Omar had nothing to do with Joe's death, but suspected. Marlowe is selling the Connect for $10 million, and the co-op are short $900,000, with Cheese presumably already having put his percentage in. Slim would have had his suspicions, I mean, remember the face he pulled when Cheese was all too happy to work with the man who everyone more or less knew, or at least suspected, killed his uncle? But it's only now, with this scene, that his suspicions are confirmed. Because this mouldy fella, who's only had significant territory for a few weeks, has all of a sudden come up with a huge sum of money, shocking everyone. There's only one rationale. Cheese has been on Marlowe's tit, getting some of that sweet Stanfield money in exchange for being a spy, giving information to Marlowe, like Joe's location, and of course when he gave up Butchie for 50k. This was finally the evidence Slim needed, and without hesitation, he takes out the traitor. Well, I say without hesitation, but notice that Slim only shoots Cheese after Cheese has lowered his gun and put it away, lest he shoot him and Cheese lets off a shot at Rick by accident. Remember also that Cheese blamed Prop Joe's death on Omar, but Slim has already spoken to Omar, so he knows this isn't true, meaning Cheese must be covering for some reason. It's interesting when you think about it that what Slim has actually done here is simply follow Prop Joe's own instructions. At the scene outside the funeral shop, Joe tells Slim that if Cheese has betrayed them, the money Cheese has made will show up, because he's that kind of character, and he tells Slim to watch Cheese. Well, watch him he did, and here Cheese flaunts the very wealth that Joe predicted Cheese would have shown, and Slim, like the loyal lieutenant he's always been, carries out his final order for Joe. You know, since we're speculating, what if this entire scene was a setup of sorts, a trap to catch Cheese out? We see that in the end, Slim does get the connect, so maybe they did have the money anyway and he was bluffing about not having enough, checking to see if Cheese would say that he's got cash available and thus unmask himself. Maybe even Rick was in on it. I mean, the comments he was coming out with seemed almost exactly what you would need to say to bait Cheese, but that probably isn't the case. In any case, I hope you enjoyed this analysis, and if you would like to see more, feel free to subscribe to the channel, let me know what character you want me to tackle next and hit the notification bell to stay up to date. Thanks for watching.